How's it going guys? Grant here with Rise Magic and today we are going to be going over the Spring Card Flourish. Now the Spring is one of those moves that is absolutely iconic in the world of magic. Any spectator who you show it to will be absolutely baffled and honestly most of the time find it more impressive than a lot of the tricks that you're doing. At least that's what happened to me when I was first starting out. This is one of those staple moves that you should know how to do, but unfortunately it is one of the most knacky moves in all of cardistry. Luckily for you though, in today's video, we are looking to make that process of really understanding the spring a lot easier by going over all the uh, sticking points for it, giving you my advice from learning the spring myself, and uh, what I wish that I knew back when I was learning it. So, without further ado, let's go and master this iconic car street move. There are plenty of different ways that you can do the spring, and I encourage you to go and find the way that works best for you. But I'm gonna show you the way that I go and spring a deck of cards. Now, the grip that I usually take is by having my thumb and finger supported on the sides, leaving room on the two shorter sides for me to put my fingers. I put my thumb about halfway on the bottom left corner of the deck, and I have my pinky on the top right corner in a similar way to the thumb. And then I have my three fingers on top supporting uh, the pinky and gripping the corner. Now a lot of the pressure that I'm going to be putting is going to be with my pinky on this top right corner and my thumb on this top left corner. I'm going to bow the cards as much as I can and then use my thumb to release that bow into a consistent spring. Now as we watch the thumb right here, I start off with pretty much my thumb bent completely and then as I'm springing the cards, I let go with my thumb and my thumb ends up bent in the completely opposite direction. As I'm going through, the thumb is really what controls that deck of cards and the spring and the smoothness of it. As you can see, the rest of my hand does really not move much at all. And that is how I prefer to spring a deck of cards. Now I do want to say that even though I just showed you my preferred way of performing the spring, there are a lot of other ways that you can perform it yourself. There are people who will spring from the corners of the cards, like this. There are people who spring with their thumb in the back. I've seen people spring off their fingers on the front, like that. Knowing that there are so many different ways to perform the spring, I would encourage you to go experiment and get out of that mindset that there is one specific way that you have to perform the spring. Depending on the size of your hands, depending on your muscle memory, depending on a lot of different factors, one way of springing the cards might work better for you and it might not be the way that I personally do it. Find out what works best for you by experimentation. Moving on to what I personally believe was the most helpful tip for me when I was learning the spring was uh, just paying attention to your thumb. When someone pointed this out to me, it changed the whole entire game. This thumb right here is going to make all the difference. So, as we watch our hand right here, you start off with your thumb curled inwards, putting a lot of pressure on the deck. But as you actually go through the spring, that thumb kind of relaxes and extends outwards until it is bowed outwards like this. And if you notice, no other part of my hand really moves while I'm performing this. Watch it one more time. It is really that thumb going forward and allowing the cards to spring off of it in a way that is very smooth and very pleasant. Just paying attention to that thumb and making sure that it is working with the cards because you have the most control in your thumb. What makes us and monkeys cooler than the rest of the animal kingdom. Use that thumb, control the cards, and honestly it makes a huge difference in your spring when you are paying attention to that movement of the thumb. The last super helpful tip I have for the spring is to just accept beforehand that you are going to be dropping a lot of cards. Don't spend all your time trying to avoid it know that you're gonna drop cards, embrace it, be ready to, because without just fully sending it and going for it, you're not gonna be able to improve as fast as you want to. Put yourself above a bed, lay a blanket on the ground, whatever you gotta to do to protect those cards, and just go for it. That's how you're gonna learn. Now that we've gone over some of my most helpful tips on learning the spring, we're gonna go over some common sticking points and how you can improve those and get past those points so you can learn your spring and have it be the best that it can be. Now, the very first one of those is just 
not having good control of the cards. Your spring is choppy, it's not smooth, the cards kind of go everywhere. And the thing that I've seen, at least in the most people for this, other than just a lack of practice, is poor strength in the hands. A lot of the times I'll see these people uh, with brand new, really stiff decks of cards trying it for the first time, and they're struggling to bend that deck, and they're because their muscles are fatigued, they can't release it as smooth as they want to. The quickest way to fix this is something that I actually inadvertently did when I was learning the spring. And uh, I just found a really old deck of cards that I thought was cool and I started practicing the spring with that. And I got the technique down with a deck of cards that wasn't very hard to bend. The spring didn't go as far because it was softer, but I really was able to get the technique down. And then as I started to go to decks of cards that were newer, I was able to build up that hand strength. If you don't have the ability to go from a different deck that's softer to harder, grabbing just like a stress ball or one of those hand strengthening tools to make your grip strength stronger, that's also a great option as well. The next biggest sticking point is actually being able to catch the cards. We've all been there, learning the spring. You go for the first time, you try it, and the cards fly everywhere. You try to catch them in your hands, but the next thing you know, a card's on the ground, a car's fallen out your window outside, a car has fallen underneath a moving car, and they're just everywhere, it's a mess. Now, unfortunately, you're gonna have to just keep on practicing to get the hang of it and really be able to catch those cards well. But that does not mean that we can't give you some killer advice to make sure that catching those cards progresses quicker. The first thing I have for catching those cards well is to go back to my first tip and look at that thumb. If you don't have good control on your thumb, you're not gonna be able to aim the cards well and point them directly into your hand. What I mean by thumb control is knowing that where your thumb is pointing is where the cards are gonna go. So, as we go there, we can have kind of this vector line from my knuckle to my point of the finger right here. Where that is pointed is essentially where the cards are gonna go. Now, it's not exact. You're gonna get used to how to control the cards and how to aim with your thumb, but that's a general rule of thumb for when you're starting out. So. So you go to spring the cards, you know where they're pointed. They're going straight down into your hand. And you can kind of aim with that thumb to really direct those cards into your hand. Now, like I talked about earlier, having better hand strength is gonna give you more control over the cards because it won't fatigue your hand as much to be constantly bowing the cards and releasing them. It's gonna be a lot easier as you do it more because you're gonna build up that very specific hand strength that you need to do the spring. And it's gonna make it a lot easier to really take that practice and that knowledge that you're doing and translate it into that muscle memory that you need to consistently get the cards where you wanna go. I am willing to bet my psychic magician abilities that I don't actually have, there is gonna be at least one or two people in the comments saying, I have small hands, I can't catch cards. You have really big hands, it's really easy for you to catch cards. And that is true. It is a lot easier for me, I will say that because my hands are huge, but it is very possible to catch the cards without having big hands or even without using your fingers at all once you get this technique down. So having this hand open, just like that, all the cards in your hand, you can have the smallest hands in the world because touch nothing but my palm right there. So practice it, understand it, aim it with your thumb. As you're learning, no matter the size of your hand, get that hand as wide and claw-like as you can and really try to learn that. But if you are a beginner, don't be afraid to put your hand against your chest or your stomach to help catch the cards if you don't have the biggest hands. The last thing on that topic is to not get ahead of yourself. Don't immediately after you learn the spring, just go for a giant spring. Right off the bat, it's not gonna go well. Practice in increments, start off small, wait till you get the spring from just that distance then maybe move it up a little bit more. Then maybe don't rely as much on the claw. Then move it up a little bit more. Move it up a little bit more. You get what I'm saying. Practice in increments. Don't go above what you already know. It'll make the learning process a lot easier with a lot less dropped cards, even though you will drop cards, like I said before. Another big complaint that I hear from people who are learning the spring is that their spring is really small. They can't get a nice big spring they want to make those huge sweeping springs that you see Andre Jeek and all these other cars doing, but they don't know how to actually get there. Now, if you guys do want us to go into an in-depth video on 
how to actually make your spring as big as possible and going really in depth on what that giant spring really entails. Leave a like, go down in the comments, let us know that that's a video that you wanna see. The one tip that I have quickly for you guys on the giant spring and just making your spring look bigger than it actually is, is uh, moving your hands along with it. Now I'm gonna show you guys here that I'm just gonna do just about a nice little four or five inch spring here. It's nothing too much. Looks impressive to pretty much anyone other than your most seasoned magicians. But as we take that same exact size spring and we go through it, if I move my hands with it a little bit, it makes it look a lot bigger than it actually is because people really only pay attention to the starting point and the ending point. And in the middle, I just see a blur of cards, which looks crazy to them. So if we start down here by my chest and end up there by my head, they're gonna think that I actually sprung it this large, which is about a foot and a half. But in reality, my spring never really exceeds like six to seven inches. Now, as your spring grows and you get better at it, doing that same thing will make your spring just look even bigger and ginormous. Why do I use ginormous? Just that one simple tip will make all that practice that you're putting into the spring look a lot more impressive than truthfully it actually is. It is the very thing that makes magic cool. Using psychological tricks to make yourself look more impressive than you actually are. At least that's how it is for me. But that's about it guys. Keep on practicing, keep on going at it. I know that in order for me to get the spring to a place that I was really happy with it, it took me about two, three weeks of just constantly working at it. And uh, I finally was able to get it after that point in time to a place that I was really happy with. Now, it might take you a lot longer than two to three weeks. It might take you a lot shorter than two to three weeks. It all depends on your uh, background with cards and how comfortable you're with it. Uh, for me, it was something that I learned a few months after I started doing things with cards, so I had a little bit of a head start. But if you're doing this fresh off the bat, it might take you a little bit longer. If you're a seasoned magician who has just never really wanted to learn the spring, you'll probably pick it up pretty quickly. But for those of you who made it to the end, I just want to give you guys a quick little update on me. As a lot of you guys know who have been watching the channel and following us on Instagram, follow it right here if you haven't already. About six weeks ago now, I went down for surgery to repair a torn ACL. Luckily, everything in the surgery went super well. I've been uh, spending my time recovering and I'm actually feeling really good right now. I'm able to walk, I'm able to balance on that leg and do a lot of physical therapy and exercises. Uh, I'm able to get up and I can squat down, which is honestly something that I will not take for granted anymore. And I've even got, I don't know if you guys can really see this here, this cool nifty brace that I can post on my Instagram story for sympathy. <laughs> but truthfully though, guys, it was honestly really encouraging to see all of you uh, reaching out to me, saying that you were praying for me, that you uh, hoped that I was feeling better and just sending your encouragement. It was really cool to be able to see uh, that outpouring of support from you guys and uh, this audience and uh, so those things that we're truly blessed to really uh, have a lot of you guys who care about us and want to see us succeed and for that I'm eternally thankful and I'm not uh, for that I realize how truly blessed we are and just how thankful I am for you guys to end this on a nice little note but yeah that and the encouragement that you guys have sent for Chandler as he was getting a surgery. It's just one of those things that's super cool to see. So just want to say thank you for thank you to you guys. Let you know that I am doing extraordinarily well. And I look forward to being on the channel a bit more. Um, look for an update in the near future about that. <laughs> look for an update in the near future about that collaboration video that I wanted to do with you guys. I'm gonna do that in a separate video, but yeah. Other than that, I hope you guys learned a lot from this. You guys are going to be doing phenomenal springs now, and I will see you guys in the next video. For all of our American viewers, happy Thanksgiving. For all of our viewers anywhere else, happy Thursday, unless you're watching this after it was posted then. Happy day. But if you made it this far, you listened to me, uh, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to us if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Peace.